we are three people from IBM Lursley, and we've come here today to uh, show you some of the experiments we've put together with Raspberry Pis. Um, we've given you all a handout uh, about Raspberry Pi, and we thought we'd show you what they are, how they work, and how we can connect them to them. Um, we know that you don't have a lot of budget in what you do, so we try to design these as cheap, accessible things that you can all try and get back at school when you get there. So, uh, four experiments, and we're going to cover some, a little bit of connecting things to the Raspberry Pi, a little bit of programming, and then maybe some other apps that you can download or experiment with that will uh, add into the curriculum, because we know that there are lots of new things that are covered by the curriculum. <coughs> so, um, uh, my colleague Mark and Tina, and what we'll do is we'll talk for 10 15 minutes and then we'll do some <coughs> and experiments and asking questions. <coughs> so, Raspberry Pi is a new development uh, built by a bunch of people in Cambridge. They're small computer boards, about £25 in price, but on top of that, you do need to buy some extras. So with these setups, we've got a keyboard and a mouse, and we are using existing monitors. So for some schools, that's more appropriate because you have existing keyboards, mice, and monitors. But for some schools who only have laptops, that might be an issue. The Raspberry Pi runs a free operating system, which is a variant of Linux. So that's something you can download, and you don't need to have uh, a license agreement for it, and it will run uh, a graphical user interface. <coughs> um, the Raspberry Pi connects to the internet or a network so you can retrieve software and part of the beauty of the system is that there are loads of people out there uh, developing new things for Raspberry Pis which you can download and install and also with your examining boards such as OCR, rather ragged print, um, but they are developing lots of exercises that you can try and their curriculum, there are exercises based around curriculum which will show you things that will you know, highlight input and output and data and processing and connections so you can use these and they're a great way to get involved and we've set one of these up so you can see how easy it is. Um, <coughs> one of the ways in which we can uh, start with uh, Raspberry Pis is to use a programming language called Scratch. It's possibly a good way to get kids involved because it's graphical and it's quite immediate and they can see a result fairly quickly. Uh, and you can also interface it to other things. So, yeah, so I'll hand it to Mark and he'll show you some of Scratch. Great, thanks, Mike. So, yeah, I'm going to show you Scratch and one of the ways that you can use that to actually interface with things in the real world. A lot of the times with these programming things, you can do it on a computer screen, that's great, but then I guess you get to heart of it. So, talking about Scratch, this is, uh, this is Scratch. And the way that it works is fairly straightforward, fairly easy to get to grips with. Um, the way that it works is just by following uh, kind of the line down, uh, passing different commands. Such things like, uh, the top one there, I don't know if you can read, it says, when the space key is pressed, and all that means is when you press the space key, it's going to start at that part of the program. And what I've actually done for this is to create a little track of my program. So if you look down here, you should be able to see three LEDs, or at least you will when I press that button. So I press the space bar, and that program has now started running. And it's going to light up the red LED, then the amber one, then turn both of them off and light the green one up, just like you expect in track of uh, And it's actually this sort of program that got me into programming many, many years ago with this sort of thing. Uh, just playing with these sorts of things to say, okay, this is the command that you need to turn the red light on. It just broadcast to turn the red light on. And then <coughs> you need to work out in which order they need to go in and which commands you need to use to actually create a program that replicates a traffic line. Um, so yeah, this is a really simple experiment I actually set this up this morning. Uh, it didn't take that long to do and as Mike was saying, it came out of an OCR recipe card that you can download online. And I think the LEDs, the Raspberry Pi, and the resistors cost all under 30 pounds. So it's really, really good one to do. So um, part of the curriculum and part of what's uh, being pushed with uh, 
the new IT curriculum is uh, programming and how we might interface to devices and get data in the air. So one of the things we've got is an experiment uh, using a barcode scanner. So uh, we bought a barcode scanner from Amazon and it plugs into the Raspberry Pi, it's a USB device, and when you pull the trigger, it scans. Now, the beauty of this is that um, the kids, for some reason, don't seem to tire of scanning stuff. <laughs> uh, and the fact that it beeps may drive you insane, but it just drives them on. So you can bring packets of uh, cornflakes and soup and <coughs> stuff in there, pack lunches. And also, there are programs on the internet that allow you to print out barcodes. So what we've done is that we've got laminated cards, we just fed them through our laminator, and, um, and what happens is that when it reads this, it comes out as if in a text editor, as if it were you pressing it on the keyboard. So there's no additional program, there's no nothing else that you have to have. It's a very simple demo. So the demo works something along the lines of um, the white sides have numbers and blue sides have uh, words. So perhaps the boys might want to do the numbers, the girls might be more, or there, there's a you know a mix of maybe they want to do a story. So there are a number of cards that we've got. Brought them all in, green ones and blue ones and red ones. Um, and the blue ones tell a story. So there, there are the words for the cat sat on the mat, but there's also big, small, hairy, smelly, and so they can make their story more. So the first question is: if I scan this one, it comes up with the word big. So what happens if I turn it upside down and scan it? What does, do I get? Do I get big or do I get big more? And, and the question is, and, and it divides the audience, and in fact you get big whichever way you scan it, because that's the way it works. We also then print them out slightly bigger, and the kids can draw an extra line in the barcode. And what happens then? Do you get, do you get a bigger? Do you get a different word, or, or how does it work? And the answer is, you don't get anything at all. Because there's more than you see in this. There's, there's some error checking code and some numbers behind this which tell the computer that it's not a valid code. And then you discover that when you look at enough of these, they've got the same pattern at the start and at the end. And that's how they know which way up they are because they identify the start and the end and they know what's in between they can reverse it. <coughs> um, then, without saying it's a computer program, and without using the word algorithm, if we've got these cards and they have, oh, my fingers are red, uh, that one's got two and that one's got five, and we give them the numbers naught to nine, how might be a good way to sort them into the right order? And could you write down how you would sort them into the right order so that your friend can sort them into the right order? And of course, that's an algorithm which they could then program. But we don't necessarily want to scare people away with how do you program, and, it, and there are lots of different ways to do it, and there might be more efficient ways to do it, and there might be less efficient ways to do it, but it's a good introduction. Um, this computer showed another scratch demo, um, and uh, interfaces a bit more so that it can make, what can do it? I possibly can't. So we've got two connectors together, and when you press, supposedly press the jelly baby together, um, it connects the two and it makes a oh, it makes a giggling noise because the OCR demo on their exam paper uh, is called a singing jelly baby. So he makes noises and you can change the noise and, and see how that works. And then we've gone uh, a bit more complicated, but again we've kept price down, so we're using something called a software-defined radio. So this Raspberry Pi has got a little radio on it, a little aerial, and there aren't actually any going over at the moment, but what it's doing is receiving all of the data from the aeroplanes that fly overhead, that are flying out across the world, and you can see where they are, you can see what height they are flying at, you can tell which call sign they are, and depending on which flights they are, you can then see the British Airways flight from Madrid inbound to Heathrow. Um, 
and, and that shows you that there's uh, a real time element to it. You can see he's flying overhead, and when you run outside his playground, there he is above you at 29,000 feet, but contra one. So you can um, no, I think so. So it, it just goes to show you all the little demos that you can put together and actually get kids interested in this sort of stuff rather than uh, a really fun exercise. And then all this stuff can be tied in together. So um, pressing a jelly baby here makes them laugh, but it could be that you press a button and change <coughs> or, or change something else. It's all about then you know, building on that and get this to work out how they get to the end solution, really. And it's all pretty easy to do. So the food, yeah, we've talked about that. Uh -huh. uh, so has, has anyone heard of uh, Makey Makey before? Perhaps seen the video online? Okay, so this uh, here is actually the Makey Makey. Uh, the way this works is just using crocodile clips. You clip onto two different parts of here and then plug the Makey Makey into uh, in this case, we're using a Raspberry Pi, but it could just as well be a computer. And then when you connect two of these cables together, it makes a connection that sends a signal to the keyboard as if, you, sorry, a signal to the computer as if you pressed a key on the keyboard. So if I take, for example, I've clipped this yellow uh, crocodile clip here onto the space board, the space bar key. So now if I hold this and touch the banana, it makes a noise. Same with the apple, orange. And it's <laughs> another way of making a sensor that can actually put information into the, <coughs> into the Raspberry Pi in this case or computer. Uh, and we actually used these in a virtual science fair that we did with some of the local schools in the area. I don't know if it was, uh, was one of them. And it was all about building sensors, uh, coming up with a problem in their school and working out how you can build a sensor to fix that. So we have ideas around whether the river that run through the school was flooding, uh, whether there was enough cutlery in the drawers in the canteen. And I think the winning idea was actually uh, how much water is being used in the school. <coughs> and it was a really good idea that all they would do is take the two ends of the connectors and put them under the tap. So that when someone turned the tap on, it would start a timer. And they could time how long the tap was on and work out how much water was being used at the school. And again, this is a really uh, quite cheap way, quick and easy way of getting the kids interested in, uh, in building sensors and thinking about how you can capture data and actually use that as well. Where would you get the bits and pieces for that particular control? So for this one, I think it was all online. I'm yeah, actually, they come from RS or Marnell, and there are another couple of websites which stock um, IT computing Raspberry Pi equipment for so the Makey Makey does come with quite a lot of stuff. It comes with a whole bunch of crocodile clips and things. And then it's up to your imagination what you use. I think. You can plug it directly in. You don't have to go through the Raspberry Pi. That's right. You can plug it straight, straight into the computer. So it's a PC or a laptop. Okay. And it's got a USB connect on it. That's right. The um, traffic lights, is that just some lights and everything else is done with their phones, Raspberry Pi? Yeah, so you, it was just a Raspberry Pi, and there's a program that's called Scratch GPIO. Okay. And GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. So on your, make, uh, on your Raspberry Pi, so you might be able to see on this one here, we'll set it up one. There's these pins on the board there. So just by a couple of LEDs, some resistors, and then some wires. You need to be careful which pins you plug it into but it's fairly straightforward. Um, the way that we've done it is to say, uh, so you see on the right here, we've uh, set all these variables, and it's just sending a message called pin 11 on, pin 11 off, and then that turns the LED on and off, which is in pin 11, essentially. You just need a slightly different measure Exactly right. And I think it's... So did you call it again once, um, Scratch G? G-P-I-O. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you Google, Doesn't that come as deep when you get the Raspberry Pi? Some of it works for discs, isn't it, that has it on? So I've got a couple that actually came with it all set up, so it had Linux uh, and 
scratch already on it, and so, I've got some that you have to download from the internet. Yeah. yeah. So you'll normally get with uh, with the Raspberry Pi Scratch, if you see the icon there, and then I've installed uh, Scratch GPI earlier, which is exactly the same as Scratch, it's just got a little bit extra that does the, the pins on the board as well. But it's, it's really straightforward, you can either download it from the Raspberry Pi or put it on a USB stick and then it's just a, a quick install. Okay. So, um, if there are more questions we can do now, or do we come, uh, come on, have a look at demos, please do.